Welcome to John Gets Games. In this introduction to Mandala Stones, I'll be giving you a brief idea of what this game is like to play. In addition to this video, I've also made a tutorial for the game where I teach all of the rules while the game is being played, and you can find a link to that tutorial in the description of this video. Now, Mandala Stones is a two to four player game that usually takes about 30 minutes to play, and in it, all the players are competing to work through a spatial puzzle to take the correct colored stones so that they can score as many points as they can before the game is over. Now, on a lower level, what you are doing in this game is on each turn, you are either taking stones or you are going to score the stones you already have. When you take those stones, you are going to move a neutral artist pawn to a free spot on the board, and then you will take every stone from each of the stacks around it that matches the symbol of that artist pawn. You will take those stones and make a stack and then put that onto your board. And in the future, on your turn, instead of adding stones to your board, you can score the stones that you have already. When you do this, you will only be paying attention to the top stones on those stacks, and you will score a specific color. So if you have three of a color, you can score all three. And if the top stones on all five of the scoring conditions are the same, you can score all five of those scoring conditions. Now, every single stack is associated with a different scoring condition, which will give you points for the uh, variety of stack heights that you have, as well as the color in specific stacks and you are trying to weave all of this together to get as many points as you can when you decide to take a full turn doing a score action. You can, of course, do small scoring actions, but every turn in this game is important because it will end once a certain number of stones have been scored, and if your opponents are doing bigger, more efficient scorings than you, they will probably get more of those in. Now, you really need to pay attention to the stacks of stones that are in the middle of the board because not only are you going to be changing the composition of it when you pull stones off, but when you move an artist pawn away, you will be freeing up that spot for other players to put a new artist pawn into that spot to potentially take the stones that they need. So this game really is a spatial puzzle trying to figure out which stones you need and in what specific order. And oftentimes you actually don't want to take as many stones as you can. You want to take very specific stones to match up with the scoring uh, plan that you've built out in front of you. Now, every player has a couple of objective cards and you can score one of them at the end of the game. So this is another thing that you are considering as you're figuring out which of the stones to take and where you are going to put them onto your board to try and score the most victory points as you can. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of this introduction, I have created a tutorial video for Mandala Stones where I explain how all of this works in detail while the game is being played. And if this game has intrigued you, then you can check that tutorial out by finding the link for it in the description of this video.